did you ever ask yourself what's really going on? And I wish these people sharing this would actually take a second to ask themselves that and do just a tiny bit of fact checking before sharing this. If you take a few seconds to go to the website and look up the actual ingredients in the current strawberries and cream oatmeal, this is the ingredient declaration. Second of all, yes, this still has more ingredients than the UK one because you're comparing a fruit and cream oatmeal to just a fruit oatmeal. Not to mention that a longer ingredient list or ingredients that you can't pronounce doesn't mean that it's less healthy or less safe. I've been over that a million times. All right, so let's compare more similar products. So in the US, we have a blueberry strawberry oatmeal and in the UK is that summer berries product. So in both of them, it's oats, sugar, dried fruit, natural flavor. In the US, there's an addition of some salt. So one of the reasons similar products might be a little bit different in different countries is just because of different taste preferences. Another could be ingredient availability. Now, of course, when people share these graphics, they always talk about banned ingredients. I've been over that many times. And I've explained in many different videos that just because an ingredient is banned in a specific country does not mean that it is unsafe at the amounts in foods. Different countries have different regulatory frameworks and sometimes they might come to a different conclusion on the same ingredient. And and that does go both ways. Let me show you what I mean. So I could make a bunch of graphics where the UK is using ingredients that are not allowed in the US, like this M&M's product in the UK is using E153, which is vegetable carbon, which is a color that is banned in the US. There are also additional ingredients in what they can call chocolate in the UK, which include things like shea fat and palm fat, whereas in the US that could not be called chocolate because our standard of identity is different. So look, we have a longer ingredient deck, additional ingredients that would not be allowed in the standard of identity for chocolate in the US and we have an ingredient that is banned in the US. Does that mean that this one is less safe or less healthy? No, because none of those arguments are evidence-based arguments to show that something is less safe or less healthy. Look at here, we have all these E numbers as well. They must be hiding something because they're not listing out the actual ingredient. You hear this all the time for US ingredients, how the entire thing doesn't need to be listed out, but that happens in other countries too. And sometimes there are even fewer things listed out in other countries versus the US, and that's just due to different labeling regulations. So as you can see here, these frosted flakes in the US, frosties in UK, and look at all of these ingredients that are hard to pronounce. And that's because on this US version, the common names of vitamins and minerals are being listed as well as the specific chemical compounds, or that's not required in the UK. Here's another example with these Oreos. So flour in the US has to say whether it's enriched or not. And then if it's enriched, it has to list out all the different vitamins and minerals that are included in that flour. In the UK, the flour actually has to be fortified, but it doesn't need to be listed out on the ingredient deck. In addition, there's same ingredients that are just labeled differently. So canola oil is labeled as rapeseed oil. High fructose corn syrup is labeled as glucose fructose syrup and then the cocoa that says in parentheses processed with alkali in the UK is labeled as cocoa powder 4.3 percent and then it lists the acidity regulator which is sodium hydroxide here. If I wanted to fear monger over this one I could say did you know that they add sodium hydroxide which is a lie to Oreos in the UK? I've shared this before as well but there are actually more food colors approved in the EU than the US. There are four color additives approved in the US that are not permitted in the EU. In turn there are 16 color additives authorized in the EU that are not allowed in the US including nine colors of synthetic origin. This is not the narrative going around on social media because what's going around on social media is just confirming people's biases and then they share it without fact checking it. 